The final thing I want to talk about in thermic effect or the thermic potential of food is its role in metabolism. A lot of people think that because foods that have a higher thermic potential are, are going to increase calorie burning that we should eat them all the time and of course you have to need those foods first. So thermic potential, the thermic effect of food can elevate your metabolism but still within the confines of the meal structures you need. For example, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater with all the other things we know. We know you can only digest and assimilate so much food in one meal. So if you had an intermittent fasting type philosophy, you would have to say, my body only uses about 500 calories right now. If I eat a thousand, I'm going to store a lot of that as body fat and I may use it later for energy, but is that effective? Is that going to give me the biggest boost in metabolism over time? Those are the kind of things that need to be contemplated and in the role of thermogenesis, that's where smaller frequent meals come into play. People always thought that you could spike your metabolism and keep it rolling. What we know now with current research is there's somewhere in the middle based on the context of your body needs that really matters most. So there are times you need bigger meals because of physical needs, times you need smaller meals. We still have to have a distance between meals to utilize the food we eat. So thermogenesis is something to consider but it's only one part of metabolism and nutrition.